Good morning. For the last few days, we have been discussing the topic of dreams on the forum, and dreams are closely related to the subconscious mind. Now, there was an interesting question yesterday. Why do we have this conscious mind and subconscious mind? Why the two? Why not just one? Where is the need for the second subconscious mind? Okay, uh, this provoked some thought in me, and I would like to share with you another, yet another leaner theory on the two minds and why do we need both. As a little child, you were born sweet, innocent, loving, and sincere. When you wanted to cry, you cried. You didn't think, what will people think of my manners or how my mom educated me. You just cried because you wanted to. When you wanted to laugh and hug somebody because you just felt like hugging them, you did exactly that. When you wanted to explore and, you know, touch the hot oven, you touched it. And what happened then? Ouch! Pain, suffering, danger, fear. Now, when the fear steps in, we start to divide. We split into two. This is where your inner child goes inside and your outer adult goes outside. The inner child is driven by love. The outer adult is driven by fear. Right. The inward directed energy, the outward directed energy. If we act like a child, we express ourselves sometimes a bit too much. We express our love, our feelings easily. When we act like the outer adult, we hide away, we shy, we hold ourselves back. Why? Because we are afraid to be too sensitive, afraid not to live up to our expectations of being a strong man who does not cry, afraid to show our feelings because they might not be understood by other people. We might get hurt or we might even hurt others. So an adult, what is an adult? It's a cluster of different fears, as sad as that sounds. Again, this is only Lena theory, okay? What is the child then? It's a cluster of love. Having a good balance is what we all want to achieve. The balance of being afraid of driving too fast, being afraid to touch the hot oven, being afraid to say something rude if you don't know them very well, being afraid of approaching another person if you don't know them too well, cautious. Yes, that is all good. This is balance between the child and the adult. Yet, if you do get to know another person, you can love them, you can express your feelings freely, you can explore, you can be curious, you can be yourself, you can even cry and you're not afraid that people will judge you for crying, being too sensitive, being not man enough, being not, not somebody you are not. Okay, but sometimes the balance gets out of balance and one becomes a bit more than the other. The inner child gets neglected. We do not express our feelings anymore. We do not express love. We do not give. We are afraid. And this is not the fear of spiders. This is the fear of certain emotions, mostly emotions of pain and emotions of, of what? Shame, which is pain as well. All sorts of all sorts of pain, not being understood by other people, being rejected, fear of rejection, fear of isolation, fear of being stupid, fear of not being funny, fear of whatever that fear is. This is all here. And sometimes they go over the board, over the board when you say, well, I'm not going to make any new friends because people can hurt me. I'm not going to get a girlfriend ever again because women are all bitches. I'm not going to get married because I know that my husband will cheat on me. That sort of fears. This is over the limit of need to be afraid of and don't really have to be afraid of, but a lot of people are still afraid of this sort of zone. If you see a poisonous snake on the floor, yes, surely you are afraid of it. But if you are sleeping in bed in an apartment on the, on the fifth floor and think, well, I'm afraid that the snake will somehow crawl in here and bite me, that is over the limit. 
Now, I hope you understand the idea of why there are two minds. Hmm. Now, what do we do with our subconscious mind? How do we communicate? This is what dreams are there for when the child shows us what is really going on on the inside. The child will show us our fears, the child will, will show us our hidden desires and so on. Now back to the topics of the dreams. And here I go with another story which I would like to tell you. I want you to listen. I have a beast. Yes, a beast. And I keep that beast in a small storage room. And I've kept the beast there for about 20 years. Okay, when anybody asks me about my beast, what it looks like, what is it, where did you get it from, I feel really resentful. I don't want to talk about my beast. I don't want people to ask me about my beast. I just tell them, I don't know where the storage room is, and maybe the beast is not even there. I don't have any beast. I lost the key to the storage room. Don't ask me. Let's talk about something else. Can you relate to this? Not yet? Okay. Now... Sometimes I forget that the beast is there, but sometimes, in the back of my mind, I still remember that there is that storage room, and I locked that beast in there. Very scary beast. And I should really go and release it, so that I don't have to think about the beast being there. But I know, oh man, if I go there, I'll have to face that scary thing again, and all the fears, and... All the emotions that I experienced back 20 years ago will all be experienced by me all over again. Do I want that? No. So just let's pretend it's not there, okay? I'm going to forget about the beast. I don't have to release it. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to talk about it or go back there. End of the story. Right? No. What is this beast? The beast, <clears throat> the beast are the strong emotions. Usually negative emotions, hated, shame, fear, and anything around those emotions. They can be positive as well, I'm going to talk about that later. Usually negative. The beast is usually negative and based on something that happened to us. Maybe losing a loved one, maybe, maybe somebody said something. Whatever triggered that emotion is not really important yet but the beast is important the emotion itself <gasps> fear oh <gasps> shame oh oh i can't believe it. that how embarrassing i am so not going to try that ever again that's my beast right pain usually pain pain of loss maybe you got hurt maybe you hurt somebody that can still be your beast feeling of guilt Maybe you were not a good son, a good daughter, a good mother, a good father. That beast is still there. What do we do? We go back to that emotion and face it. How awful. We don't want to face our beast. <sighs> what do we do? <laughs> the beast comes out in the dreams. But the only person who can deal with the beast, who has the key to the storage room and who knows where the storage room is, is you. You are your own doctor and the best doctor you could you could be for yourself. What is the key? The key is the permission you give yourself to prepare for the emotions again, to prepare to relive that experience. This is the key. Say, okay, I accept the fact that that was an awful experience, that was an awful emotion that I don't want to experience again, but for the sake of releasing the beast from my storage, I will face it again. I will go through every single minute of it and I can cry and I can be in pain, but I know that after a while the beast will be out and it will run away, it will leave and I don't have to think about it being there locked in my storage room. Okay. The only person who knows where the storage is is you. Your inner child or your outer adult. Your inner child will go to that storage room in your dreams. The outer adult is a smart cookie because they can go there in your waking time. Because the outer adult controls the inner child. So at night when the outer adult is sleeping, the inner child can be naughty and go and release the beast. Or during the day when the outer 
outer adult is all alert, they could do it consciously. Okay, I know I have suppressed some emotion back when I was 10, 5, 12, 20 because of a certain event or a chain of events or circumstances. I know that those emotions are not pleasant. I don't want to remember them, but I will consciously go back to that time and remind me myself of exactly what I went through. I want to relive it again. And you go detail by detail by detail by detail. You can be sitting in front of another person, in front of a piece of paper, computer screen, or lie there quietly in bed with your eyes closed and going back and back and back. And do, going through all those terrible things that you have thought and felt back in that time when you met your beast. When it was a little small beast, now it's big and fat back there in the storage. Beasts tend to grow all the time, yeah. Now, why is it that other people don't find our beasts scary? Funny question. Remember the cartoon Monsters, Inc? Monsters. How every child had their own monster. Oh, this is how it is. My monster is big, fluffy and has claws. When I tell you about my monster, you say like, yeah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a very friendly monster, but I'm I'm sorry you met a monster like this, but it doesn't it doesn't really scare you. It doesn't scare anybody else but Lena. Who's this Lena's monster? Now, when you tell me about your monster, it's much easier for me to to look at your monster with a neutral point of view. Yeah, surely it has big horns and scales on the body and looks really yuck but I'm not afraid of it because it's not my monster this is why it's easy for me to listen to your monster story where you met the monster how it grew into a bigger monster and looked even scarier and how it's huge now so it's almost breaking the walls of the storage room and I can help you by listening and by going there hand in hand to the storage room with you talking me through it to release the big bugger so that you hold the key and I hold your hand and you open the lock and you feel God it's gonna feel so scary again yeah. and the monster comes out and you go through this and maybe some tears are there maybe you're shaking you look weak and uncomfortable yet the monster is out <sighs> gone and you sleep comfortably you know that your storage room is empty, the door is open and there is nothing there. Nothing to keep bugging you, it's like release me, release me sort of thing. Or I'm going to remind you of myself by going like, ooh, every night or during the day. Ooh, remember me? I'm still here. Bloody monsters. Oh. Now, if you listen to this video from, from the beginning, you might be still with me but if you lost track and then are back now you might think Lena has really lost her mind she's talking about monsters at the age of 30 wow okay that's not one of my monsters though judgment of other people is not my monster I have different monsters nobody nobody can know what my monsters look like sure I can tell you if you're interested but Usually people are interested in their own monster because their monster is the most terrible, scary looking thing. Probably the biggest too. Don't we all think that? Hmm. One question I want to ask you. What if I ask you? What is your beast? What is your monster? You say, well... I don't have a monster. I don't really remember what my monster is like. I don't know where I met it and I don't know where I put the key and I really don't remember where the storage room. Maybe there is no storage room. Haha! -ha. There is always a storage room and the key to it and you are the key holder. It's part of you. You can't lose it. You can't forget where the storage room is. You can choose to want to neglect the storage room. Go, 
go all around it. I'm not getting anywhere close to that storage room because I know there's a big monster in there and it probably has grown too out of proportion. Okay. Now, I did promise you that I will also talk about the good monsters. Not all monsters are bad. Not all beasts are bad. Some beasts are really cute and fluffy. You want to know about those? Okay, well imagine your beast and your monster looks like a beautiful female dressed in whatever you imagine her to be dressed in, sexy. Yet there's something about her that you think if you tell other people about your beast and your monster, people will say, what? You like that? We don't like that. We are different. Don't tell us about that, or we'll call you a weirdo or a pervert. Yet you think that little cute fluffy monster is exactly what you need, and it brings you so much pleasure to look at it, and to play with it, and to be afraid of it, maybe even. Yet, you live with the majority. You live with people who do not like that type of monsters that type of beast. They don't understand why you would want that type of beast in your house and part of you. So they tell you, lock it. You lock it. You locked it in your storage room. And you think, well, it's not there. Gone. <laughs> I wonder how that, we how that how that beast is doing. I wonder if the beast has grown, I wonder if it's still there. Why don't I sneak into that storage room, open it up and take a peek if the monster, if the beast is still there. And you see the beast, it's still there, it doesn't go away until you release it. And that beast looks as fluffy as ever, as beautiful as ever, and you feel such pleasure looking at it. And Jesus, I can't do anything with myself. The beast is still there. It didn't disappear from the storage room. I can't tell anybody that I like that beast and I have that beast because people would just not understand. You know, they used to tell me that you better lock it. You better kill it. But I can't kill it. It's so cute and fluffy and I want to keep it. So that beast will come to you in your dreams. And it does. From time to time, it visits you at night and says, Hey you, I'm still here in the storage. What's up? You want to play? You think like, yeah, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do. I want to play with you, monster. I want to play with you, my beast. I love you. You're, you make me so happy. You make me alive again. What happens in the morning? Lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it! I'm not gonna tell anybody that I have the monster in my closet, in my storage. No monsters. So normal. Now, how do we deal with that monster? We don't want to release it. We want to keep it cute and fluffy, right? We have to face it. We have to face it. We go back to the monster in our conscious adult outer state and say, hey monster, hey beast, let's talk. I want to know where I got you from. I, I want to know where I first met you when you were a little fluffy little puppy. And the monster will tell you, I remember when you were six in kindergarten, or when you were 10 at school, or when you had a piano teacher when you were 15? Yeah, that's when you met me. Aha. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do remember that. Happy memories they were. And monster beast memories are not always sad, awful memories. They can be happy, good memories too. Yet, why do we choose to hide it? Because people, parents, family, partner, friends, they do not accept our beasts. But if you are gay and you've been hiding that beast in your storage, just because you don't want your parents to be disappointed, and some parents can be, not all of course, or you don't want to be different from your friends, you don't want your guys, guy friends to go like, whoa, okay, okay, stay away from me kind of thing. Some people can react like that, and that is really wrong, but 
people are people and people are afraid of the unknown because we're all outer adults and we do not like things that are new, things that are different to ourselves. Face the beast. We're gonna go back to that moment when you were six or ten or twelve or fifteen or twenty and trace the events, trace the events back. What were they, those emotions and why did I overreact to them? Often you're looking for confirmation as a child, you're looking for approval. You're looking for approval from other people, approval of your parents, approval of your teachers, approval of women. When your sexuality starts to develop, you realize that you're a boy and she's a girl, she's not the same. You want to be liked by the girls too and you want the girls to approve of your actions. Yeah, you do this and she doesn't smile and you do that and she doesn't smile. And then you do this and she smiles. She looks happy. Aha! And that brings you pleasure. And whatever you did that time to make her smile, to make her happy and get an approval and she went like, ha ha ha, that is so funny, do that again, I like it. Whatever that action was that brought you approval of a woman is where your beast was born. And it slowly grew. So you try the next time with the next girl, you try to imagine what if I do something like that. Some girls might not smile but some will and you hope for that strong emotion again and beasts are very strong emotions. The joy from seeing her smile, the joy, joy from getting an approval for something stupid that you did getting love, understanding and so on. That joy from that from the feeling of oh, she likes me, she she smiled at me, she's happy, she's still laughing at something completely silly that I did. Yet she never she never really laughed before when I was doing this or that, but when I did this, she smiled and she looked happy. So I'm going to think that this is my thing. This is when women are happy to see me doing that. Exactly. Common, 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 common. You can find people with the same type of beasts. You see, Lena's beast is furry with claws. Your beast might be quite uh, shapey with high heels. And somebody else's beast is this little thing called hated when they just they start to hate a certain type of people or a certain person and they keep the beast in the closet and they know it's really not right to, to be hating them yet they can't go back there and experience a strong emotion again and release that beast. Hated, shame, mm, something with your parents, something with your circumstances, why wasn't I born into a rich family, why didn't my parents feed me properly when I was young, why didn't why somebody did something to me? Why did my first love leave me? Why did my husband cheat on me? Why, why, why? All these emotions of pain, like somebody's poking you with a knife. That thought of pain inside. Do you want to experience again? No. How will you release your beast without experiencing it? <laughs> without facing that beast, without experiencing it again. You can't. To go look it in the face, <gasps> that knife again. I can feel it, I can feel it, I can feel it. It's gonna be gone. And it usually goes away. Worth a try, definitely, definitely worth a try. Yeah? As long as you understand what happened back then, your, your good beast or bad beast, where did they come from? When they were a little cub when they were a little puppy. <gasps> or a little puppy. Ugh. Depends. Depends on what it was. Hated, anger. Or pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Could be anything. 
something for you to think about and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.